Hi, I'm Bill Hurd on behalf of Hackaday. Today we're going to be talking about heat and thermal resistance. Now this is one of the first things I learned as an engineer working his way up through, through the ranks was how to tell how hot an object gets and therefore what its reliability would be. So it's not something that I got out of a data book. Uh, you'll hear me say I was a self-taught engineer. That, that's not quite true because I learned a, a lot from the people and the engineers I worked with. So my first uh, week on the job as an engineer, and a guy named Ken Barch stopped by and said, if you can add and multiply, you can do thermal resistance. And that's what we're going to do here. So what are we talking here today? What are we talking about? Why is thermal resistance, what's that mean anything to us? Well, we're talking about power devices, power MOSFETs, power transistors. Uh, we're talking about heat sinks of all sizes and shapes. And we're talking about the little things in between. Um, this may even apply to a 3D printer uh, where you've got the heating element here in wattage and the, uh, as the heat goes down that, that's a thermal resistance. And maybe with the right numbers we can even tell how hot it gets where and if that were to keep my printer from jamming, that'd be great. So, um, real quick, the unit of measure for thermal resistance is theta. It's a Greek letter. Uh, you'll see it as T sometimes because we can't print uh, theta all around the place. And it's measured in degree C per watt. So if we move this around a little bit, we have theta times watts equals the temperature, the temperature drop. So before we go any further, we need to uh, discuss wattage. Uh, and we're going to just use for our examples two watts. But in real life, uh, you see a three terminal regulator here. If it drops three volts across it at one amp of current draw by the, pro by the project, that's three watts. All right, now that we know the power in our example here, we can go ahead and uh, do some calculation right out of the data sheets. So as you can see, I've been scribbling on my table here a little bit. And this is the same thing you saw before, except now we pick two watts. Typically, we do our calculation from the junction inside the transistor out to the ambient air. Uh, you could actually go backwards and say, hey, of, of the temperature I'm allowed to get, you come back in. Okay, you've probably seen this heat sink. This is a common one. And, and this is kind of like the, the standard size you would see uh, before you go with something customized or something that you have to put a lot of thought. But this is a building block, and that's why I want to do this exercise and show you how I'm going to use it. So if we look at the data sheet for this, we see that uh, it's got a thermal resistance up in the top left of 25.8. Let's call it 25 because I'm old and I like round numbers uh, or my math doesn't work anymore. You do see a chart below where it's uh, showing you the, how well it works when you force air by it. This starts to get the convection part. But we're going to take just the 25 degrees for our example here. By the way, you'll find this on all heat sinks. They want you to use their parts, so they're going to tell you how and tell you the information. And let's take a look at putting this all together. So if you start with an ambient of 38 degrees C, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it's just part I picked, you could get hotter, but let's, let's just take with that. If we take two watts, which we said we will use as an example, and 25, which we just got out of the uh, data sheet, we see that that's 50 degrees C that we add on to the temperature. So now we're up to 88 degrees C and we're ready to go into the device. This is the case to sink and quite simply that just means marrying this up to this. Uh, if these are both perfectly flat they'll do okay like this. We're actually going to show the numbers in a second. Most often we use uh, the heat sink compound. We used to call this bird poop in the old days. We didn't call it poop actually, called it something else. And it's because it just gets all over the place, it gets in your hair, all over the person next to you. So um, heat sink compound and bare steel is one way. We can have heat sink compound and a mica insulator. And this is uh, if we want to insulate the heat sink so that we're not short and stuff together. And then the third one you'll see sometimes is this little uh, stick, uh, uh, so this uh, silicon insulator that um, that the production people actually kind of like. It's a little more costly, but it uh, won't come off. You don't have to worry about the grease washing away, and it will fill in any imperfections between the device and the heat sink. So here we see that just thermal grease uh, by itself is 0.1 or 0.2 degrees C per watt. 
we see that mica, if you need an insulator with thermal grease, is 0.3 or 0.4. So if you have 2 watts, that'd be 0.6 to 0.8. And then you see the uh, silicon rubber that I was showing you. That's a degree C per watt. So here we are back at our equation, and we just learned that uh, mica with thermal grease is 0.4 degrees C per watt. We have 2 watts, so that'll be 0.8 degrees. So now we're up to 88.8 .8 degrees. Okay, here we pulled up the data sheet on an LM317. It's a, one of the older fashioned uh, voltage regulators. It's not an LDO itself, but these still apply to every regulator out there. You'll find three pieces of information off this particular part of the data sheet. One up in the top right corner is, uh, is the max rating of 125 degrees C for consumer. You'll see there's a 150 degrees C up there, but most of the time it's 125 for us. You see that the case, the, the junction to case is 4 degrees C per watt. So if that's 2 watts, that'll be 8 degrees temperature of the final last part getting into the die. If you want to use the, uh, the LM317 without a heat sink, it also gives you that. It just says, hey, from junction to ambient, it's 50 degrees C per watt times 2 watts is 100 degrees right there. So you, you'll see uh, we probably need a heat sink in this uh, particular uh, demonstration. And finally, we get to the junction to case uh, spec. So we've added three resistances together. The uh, junction to case, the junction is the junction of the chip and the metal frame or lead bond frame or, you know, all these different things. But I'm going to show you one here. Uh, we've got a TO3 case. These used to be popular back when I first started. And now the TO220 case has replaced it. One time I even dropped one of these when I was in the service and it rattled afterwards. I think it was big old chunky germanium or something. So <clears throat> if you look here. I've got it on my screen here, it's on your screen now. The die, or the junction, is this thing right here. These are two bonded lead wires for uh, two of the terminals, but that's the junction. And you can even see now, it, we're talking about getting it from here to all the metal that's around there so that we can get it uh, back out to the heat sink on, on its way. And if you look at this drawing here, this is straight out of a data book. You see another uh, way the uh, junction to case works. This is probably more of a uh, surf, not a, a surface mount. I'm sorry, but you see here we're not trying to get to a heat sink as much as the heat sink in this case is the PC board and maybe the copper land uh, underneath it. But if you look closely, you're going to see a lot of little thetas, and now you know what that is. So that's it in a nutshell. If we then summarize here real quick, we started out with 38 degrees ambient. We added 50.88, and we came up with 96.8 degrees total when we start from the junction till we get to the air temperature. If you remember, we said that it was 125 degree max. So at 2 watts, using this heat sink, you're okay. All right, and, and finally, let me show you uh, the reward for all of our uh, great heat management we're doing. We put our heat sink, we got our bird poop in there. And that is, you get more reliability. So in this case, this is differing energy levels, and without going in, Boltzmann's constant and everything. Um, basically what this shows is if I can lower the temperature 30 degrees, I will have something that's 10 times more reliable. So, you know, put that back in, 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 in picture with all the other components. They add up and you get a final thing that says how reliable something is. So. That that's it. That now you now you know thermal equations, you know equilibrium. You can tell if a part's getting too hot or not too hot. Uh, you you may have burned your finger along the way. I know I have. Um, the links uh, will be posted on Hackaday as along with some of these diagrams, maybe some of the Excel spreadsheets or something, so that you can review this later. Uh, as always, get a hold of me if uh, you have any questions. We'll find a forum for doing that kind of thing. So again, Bill Hurd on behalf of Hackaday, keep hacking.